Okay, I'm back at it again, and I'm going to show you the finished production run of my SA-1 adapter. Now here I have two SA-1 boards. SA stands for Super Accelerator. Um, so it's got this coprocessor here. This is used on games like uh, Mario RPG, Kirby, Dreamland, and many others. There's two styles. You have the 1L3B01. Now the 3 just signifies how big the SRAM is. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so you get a game like this where it's 1L5B that has 256K SRAM. And the 1L3B has 64K. <clears throat> so if you notice, there's the boards are a little bit different. Um, this one uh, on the left is a little bit taller um, than the one on the right. And then the one on the left has kind of exposed vias where you see all the little shiny dots. And this one over here doesn't. It's uh, The vias are all um, kind of covered up. And, and so... Um, so anyways, but my adapter fits on both, uh, both styles. And so <clears throat> here is the adapter. It's uh, It comes just like you see it here with these parts on it. This is a microcontroller and the microcontroller is already pre-programmed to where if you wanted this to be a multi-game, um, the provisions are already here on board. If you see the multi uh, silk here, um, if you select jumper A, which is over here in the corner, or B, it selects you know one of those three options. So the the A plus B is two is a two game multi game on a 64 megabit chip. Uh, the top two A and B separately are on a 128 megabit chip. So this game or this adapter can can handle uh, the common 29L, 3211 EPROMs all the way up to the 128 megabit EPROMs. Um, so I've designed it also to work with this specific uh, flash ROM also. You can see that it's a M59 PW. One two eight two, and then uh, of course it it's also can use the um, the MX uh, version. So so, <clears throat> anyways, so uh, this can run as a single game with, with just one jumper up here that determines if it's a. 32 meg or 64 megabit chip. Um, almost every SA1 game, with the exception of one, uh, are 32 megabits and under. There's a Mario RPG hack called Armageddon that is 64 megabits in size, and so that's that's why that's there. So it uses these little half holes uh, to to solder down and uh, with a pencil tip iron, it's pretty easy to get it on. So this chip here is the level translator. So this chip operates the three volt ROMs properly. Um, so you got the voltage regulator, the level uh, translator. Oops, TV came on. Um, so. Anyways, these five holes here, that's how where how I program the microcontroller. And then um if you're going to do multi-games, whether it be two, three, or four, um these two points here would be how you tie on to the SRAM to uh bank the SRAM so it'll retain all your saves for the different games. So um so I'm going to show you two. This version is actually my prototype version, uh, which is a little different, but it il illustrates the point just fine. 
Now the SRAM on this one is 256K, but these two games, the Paradis and the Kirby Superstars, don't require 256, they're just 64. So we can actually lift one of the legs on this uh, SRAM chip and um, to get banking for the smaller SRAM required games. So, you know, so it'll save each, um, the, uh, the saves on each one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this in. Again, it's my uh, prototype, so it's it's a little uglier than um, than my production version. Also, uh, it remembers what game you were playing last. So if you were playing Paradise last, which which I was, then um, then when you power the game back up, it'll start back on the game that was last played. And so. I'm just going to illustrate how this uh, this one has a save file already intact. So I can go in here and I can load. <clears throat> and so my save is intact and and uh, fully loaded and armed and ready. This really is one of my favorite games. And so. Okay, so I'm gonna hold the reset button right now. One, two, three, about three seconds. And it'll switch to the other game or games that you have, uh, assuming you're doing a multi-game. And so I'm bringing this up just so I can sh you can see that this one also retained its saves. And so, all right, so even though that's my prototype, the, the production one performs the same way. So this is the production board right here on, and, and this has four games in it. The Mario RPG, Kirby Superstars, Kirby Dreamland, and Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension. So it's, obviously it's on a 128 megabit chip. They're a little harder to find than, than, than the smaller ones, but they're still out there. And so, um, and I actually have a little SRAM replacement board to, to make upgrading the SRAM a little easier. So this is the little SRAM board and it, um, um, it goes in place of the old SRAM. Now this one originally had, because it's a 1L5B, originally had 256. K SRAM, and so that makes things a little easier. But um, so anyway, so this SRAM expander, if you will, just um, uh, makes it a lot easier to upgrade and you know the SRAM to um, to accommodate the multi games and the multi saves. So uh, I'll pop this in. And now the, the red wire you see on the back side here, I don't know if you can see that with the lighting, but um, um, that taps onto the reset uh, point. So I'll just show that to you real quick. So that just attaches to the reset point there, pin 26. Uh, and I just have it going through the hole just to be a strain relief. And I got a little bit of glue on it too, because that's a, of all the soldering, that's probably the most delicate of the solders um, for this not, you know, for the one that doesn't have the exposed views. And so, um, so this is uh, Kirby Superstars. And I'll just quickly go through and show you the, you know, memory retention. So obviously that game has memory two three and one thing to note about the static rams is that nintendo used ultra low power static rams which is why you, you can see memory saves from 20 years ago and um you know the battery's still alive and running although probably not much longer but um so this is dreamland and you can see my my little save progress there 
two, three. Uh, and so the SRAMs that I'm using also are the ultra low power SRAMs because SRAMs are not all made the same. The, the current needed to retain the SRAM in standby mode on mine is in the micro amps where um, uh, a lot of SRAMs are in the milliamps, which is a huge difference. You know, the milliamp ones, one, two, three, the milliamp ones, you know, might last three or four months or five or six months, but the microamps will last several years. And so, um, so it's a big difference. But So anyways, my little SRAM adapter uses uh, the ultra low power ones, which should last a long, long time. And so here's um, seven uh, Mario RPG, and you can see that I've, you know, played it, and it has retention as well. So, <clears throat> um, so now I have um, one other one to show you. Um, again, this this has my little SRAM adapter on here and um, so these two lines here you know just bank you know the inside of that you know so each mem the memory for each game is in its own separate bank um, and again I'm tied to the reset spot and run it over to the board here so this is a production run board um, now this one's a little different and and on the games the sa1 is capable of running uh, standard games to some extent now Super Mario World as it is normally you can play the game but it won't save uh, but this version of Super Mario World has been altered so that it will save your progress as you can see I have you know level 20 completed and so, um, anyways, so, you know, and it plays normally. So, one, two, three. And there's Mario RPG. I don't think I need to show you the saves on each and every one of these. Um, but it is here. So, one, two, three. And I think this just has the other two Kirby's. So and this has, has a save point. One, two, three. So um, it's not necessary to have one of these little SRAM adapters, expanders. I mean, you can cob in a... Um, a one megabit, you know, SRAM and lift the legs and solder to the legs and um, one, two, three. Um, but you know, the little adapter just makes it a heck of a lot easier. So, um, so, um, so, anyways, um, so that was. So I showed you the two-in-one and then two four-in-ones, one of them being with Super Mario World. So this is one without the SRAM. Um, I have a little kind of a solder anchor point here just to keep it, you know, from... Just to stabilize everything. That's not necessary either, but... But, um, but it's there in case you want to use it. So both of these are on the older style boards, whether it has the exposed vias. And um, this one is the 64K, and this one's the 256K version. So um, anyway, so it's just, you know, you don't need, I guess my point on that is that you don't need this reset line going if it's just a single game, nor would you need any of these or the SRAM expander. If you're just doing one game, one single game, 
um, you know, all you would need is, you know, this. And then just mount your ROM here or whatever game you want to make. And don't have to worry about the multi-game or anything else. It's, um, so, so anyhow, that's, that's kind of the, the basic rundown here. This is, this is the board and uh, with the pencil tip iron, it's pretty easy to, uh, to marry it there you have to use a, a hot air uh, machine to get the surface mount roms off of the the donor cart but um so uh these are now for sale um i think these are uh 12 dollars each if you buy a bunch of them maybe i could go down a little bit and um Give you some sort of bulk discount, but um, that's what they are. And then, uh, if you want the little SRAM expander, then that's um, I think I've got this for six dollars, I think. And that's pretty close to cost when you consider the cost of the SRAM and the parts and having it assembled and the circuit board made and so on. So, um, there you go.